Um, we do uh, customization. We, we augment existing uh, platforms. You know, if you have like a, a Wasser 10 that has a ton of, a ton of <laughs> like QC If you're familiar issues. with like, like the concept of like a basket case as far as like a Harley goes, it doesn't run as in parts in a basket in your garage. That's kind of what these were. I'm, everybody knows I'm not really much of an AK guy, but I picked up one of these 410s sometime in the 90s. Uh, this one I picked up back when AKs were kind of like cool and popular in the training community and I decided I wanted to get more familiar with them. I went and took a class with it. This probably wasn't all that bad to begin with, but like he said, it wasn't really heavily invested in, didn't have a lot of high-end parts, wasn't a, an awesome rifle by any right. stretch. This one was just like a novelty disaster, uh, <laughs> but these guys obviously have, have made them uh, look gorgeous and uh, they feel smooth. We're gonna shoot them here in a second. This guy though, when we got this in, tons of problems, lots of, uh, the rivets were all bad on it. Um, we Do you had even to remember what it was originally. Oh what, yeah, what it was, was it? Uh, it was a uh, Wasser 10. Uh, Romanian Wasser 10 had some uh, had some like uh, Chinese um, furniture on it. Had a uh, uh, I think a Tapco folding stock or something like that, Sweet. and uh, had a had an old school Tapco trigger. Um, one of the one of the slap masters, and um, uh, this receiver was also warped. Um, rivets were really bad on it. Um, receiver was also very soft. We ended up stripping it down, um, reheat treating the receiver, uh, re-riveted it. But we ended up having to um, do a little bit of um, do a little bit of welding on sheet metal, which is always a nightmare. Um, pulled that out, fixed those issues, smoothed out the action. We put in an ALG AKT trigger. Uh, put on that Mission First Tactical uh, butt stock that you like. Um, Veltor uh, tube adapter, Israeli grip, put on the, uh, the Troy uh, short hand guard, as well as replace the um, standard gas tube with a machined uh, Troy uh, railed setup, put on a PWS style brake, parkerized it, and then we did a, uh, um, just did a, um, which one is this? This is a sniper gray, yeah. Cerakote over the top of that. Polished um, internals. Polished internals, shoots really flat. Um, these ALG triggers are great, but we do a lot of additional work to them. Uh, Tommy changes the geometry on them a little bit, and uh, we smooth them out. Um, anything else you wanted to add on that guy? No, that's it. Yeah, now yeah, we we were wondering uh, which one got uh, got ran over the most because they were both pretty uh, both pretty rough. That's probably the 410. Yeah, this was uh, this whole thing was bent like a banana when we got it. Um, <laughs> Seems relatively straight now. Relatively, well done, yeah, guys. yeah. You know, you know, you can only. You can do a lot with metal, um, especially at uh, varying temperatures. Um, this guy, we set it up essentially the same. Um, there are really not a lot of aftermarket products that are made for these uh, uh, made for these 410s. So you know, we got a little creative with it. We ended up actually putting on um, <clears throat> this uh, Zukov end that clamps to the barrel. Now this barrel is has a heavy taper to it. Um, it looks like a uh, looks like an ice cream cone. Uh, uh, <laughs> set up on there. So we had to actually turn down the journals on that so that the uh, aluminum chassis could clamp to it. Um, we went ahead and shortened the uh, barrel, um, permanently attached a uh, you know, little breaching brake we had laying around. It was originally 7.62. We, um, you know, we um, went ahead and uh, reamed it out in the middle and so that, you know, you can run 41 caliber slugs through it or whatever. Uh, put that mission first on there. Viltor stock as well. Did the exact same thing with the uh, the ALG AKT trigger. Um, smoothed it out. This took a lot of work. Um, we had no magazine with it, so we went ahead and we got um, uh, the only magazine that was available for it was the uh, 30 round drum. So works. Uh, you know, it may be a novelty. Um, I would personally stick with maybe a uh, maybe a um, a stick mag uh, just for reliability sake uh, we ran probably uh, a couple hundred rounds through it um, until we could get it to cycle everything reasonably um, all of the high brass worked perfect um, the only thing that really didn't work was like the uh, two and a two and a half inch two and three quarter inch light bird loads but that stuff's made for uh, uh, shooting rabbits and um, uh, various other uh, smaller things running any kind of uh, buckshot bird shot or buckshot or slug through it uh, runs runs flawlessly. We also did this parkerized it manganese phosphate and then we did the uh, sniper gray Cerakote on it So the, the triggers also in these four tens are uh, Custom made they do not drop in they have to be machine to fit Yeah, so Tommy did a lot of work on those guys. It's a, it's a one-off gun <laughs> This we did not 
paint. The critical the criti critical components, we don't paint, we do a manganese parkerizing. So this uh, parkerized finish, it's a uh, uh, you know chemical process that we have, is actually underneath all of this paint, and then it just has basically the uh, paint over the park. Uh, absolute best finish you can put on a firearm. And just found out about a little bonus. We'll say it. You guys were on those missions first. You were. Oh. Number one, eagle engraving. Watch out. All right, so here we go, first shots. Now, honestly, big drum and all that, there is a little bit of a novelty to this. When I first purchased this gun, it was very much as just a novelty, kind of one of those 90s buys, like, ah, it's a gun I can afford and it's different, let me try it out. I probably haven't put 200 rounds through this thing in the entire 20 plus years I've owned it. But now it's been refurbished, obviously, Fire Control Group has, has made it like awesome and put a big drum on it. I'll get some regular magazines. But the fact is that, what I've got in here is those Winchester Defender disc and pellet rounds really designed for the handguns. But as a home defense gun, you know, a semi-auto 410 may not be a bad choice if it's reliable. Um, you know, it's a relatively maneuverable gun. And uh, especially if you have somebody that's gonna be recoil averse, uh, semi-auto 20 gauge is what I recommend, or a pump 20 gauge. So a 410 isn't much of a step down from that. And you know, let's take a look at what we're putting into a target at, you know, we're probably about 20, 25 feet right now. And that's some that's some business, right? And obviously, it's not exactly the, the uh, perfect alignment yet. There we go. And let's go up a little higher and do that. Let's take a look. Come on down here. That's a lot of business. You know, several discs coming out of this, uh, along with this is a three-inch shell 410. There's almost no recoil whatsoever. So while you may look at a 410 semi-auto in general and a 410 uh, AK type gun in particular and say, meh, I'm not so sure that that's valuable. Um, I can't say that for my wife or uh, anybody else who might be a little bit recoil averse, this might not be an awesome, awesome choice. You know, just smash that safety down and, and go as a uh, home defense tool. Let's take a look at that regular AK.